sitting slightly softer there by a third of a percent. And just looking at how the currency is faring against uh, the US dollar, you're looking at uh, the uh, SETI, uh, which uh, we have seen it start the week on a poor note and sitting uh, flat as it stands right now, 2.135. And as we we're saying, according to uh, uh, the IFC, the International Finance Corporation, the current glitch in Ghanaian government finances is only temporary as the country's economy is expected to grow further in coming months. Let's get an update on recent activities in the Ghanaian equities, fixed income and money market space. Derek Asara Mensa, Senior Analyst at African Alliance Securities, is joining us now from Ghana. Derek, thanks for joining us. Uh, the markets in, in Ghana are slightly uh, softer, uh, slightly, slightly uh, softer today, but uh, overall, I mean, we're sitting with markets which are up at 64% year-to-date gain. Which stocks right now are still offering value? Well, the banking stocks are still offering a lot of value. Um, most of the stocks on the market, especially the consumer stocks, are approaching fair value or they are even um, overpriced because of the rally that ensued in the first half of the year. But um, we, we are looking at the stocks like Carl Bank, which is gradually approaching fair value, but then it still has some bit of appetite in there. Um, we're also looking at Echo Bank Ghana, which has, which has a lot of promise. Um, there hasn't been so much demand in the stock, but we believe that the company has um, great prospects going forward. So that's one of the stocks that um, at the moment has a lot of, ha have a lot of value. Mm -hmm. um, but then the consumer stocks are actually um, a bit high at the moment. So they are experiencing a lot of um, profit taking on the market. As you say, not so much interest in the likes of Ecobank relative to the other financials. But, uh, you know, Ecobank does have a str strong Pan-African uh, presence right now. And uh, also uh, potentially a Nedbank coming in as an equity player uh, if it exercises the option there. Um, so, so how do you see Ecobank positioned relative to other key banks across Africa right now? Well, that is a, a, exactly the leverage that Ecobank Ghana has because at the moment Ecobank has that Pan-African leverage because of its parent company. Um, right now it has the leverage of, of about 33 African countries and this, is, this allows Ecobank Ghana to bank the big multinationals and then the big corporates because it offers um, seamless border transactions which these multinationals are very keen on. Um, we believe that this along with certain strategic alliances that Ecobank has managed to um, put into its business model is going to be the key um, factors that is going to spawn the growth of Ecobank Ghana. Mm -hmm. the, um, this is a very key structure. The, the scope that it has across Africa is very key to Ecobank Ghana's growth. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, you're talking about the Pan-African story there, but it's, let's just focus in on uh, the Ghanaian economy where it's at right now. We are talking about the IFC's comments uh, that current glitches in, in finances at government level are just short term right now. Is that something that you agree with? I mean, when you're looking at these various companies which are heavily skewed towards Ghana, um, are you concerned around how the macroeconomic situation might affect earnings? Um, well, at the moment, um, a lot we, we've waited a lot of the bad weather. Um, that has to do with um, utility constraints, um, power constraints and the rest. So at the moment, what we are facing, as companies are facing in the Ghanaian economy, really has to do with um, high interest rates and um, the fiscal deficit that has caused a lot of um, tight, tightening of monetary policy. But um, these are normal, these are normal factors and normal features that come with post-election years in Ghana. So I believe a lot of the companies have already factored that into their annual budgets. And we believe that um, going forward, maybe towards the um, last quarter of the year and from next year, things are going to be looking um, upbeat. So um, these are normal features and we think that um, the companies will be able to weather the storm. I mean, uh, Ghana has certainly been an, a market that has attracted investment in terms of the fixed income space, money market space. I mean, you just look at 182 day t bills, uh, it's trading at just over 22%. I mean, you don't get this yield in many countries in the world. Um, so, is it, are, you know, are these yields still attracting strong inflows uh, from outside of Ghana? Um, that's the interesting thing. Usually, um, historically, when interest rates are this high in Ghana, you see the stock market going down. But um, we are in a current phenomenon where the 
interest rates or the money markets are offering about 22 percent and the stock market is doing about 60 percent so uh, it's it's the best of both worlds if you if you actually have to look at it that way yes the money market is still attracting a lot of investors especially the local investors who are risk averse um, but then the stock market is also looking lucrative and um, we see a lot of gains in there as well we believe that um, over the next three months um, or towards the end of the year this the interest rates are still going to hover around the same rate. And then um, after, the, um, af after the, about the third quarter thereabout, we are sure that these um, interest rates will be eased a bit based on the fiscal deficit at that moment. Mm -hmm.